Hi there, I'm Tyler Ballhorn. Welcome to the Stock Scores Market Analysis for January 10th, 2010. This week I'm going to go through the charts of the exchange traded funds that you see here. The DIA represents the Dow 30. We've got the Canadian dollar, gold, oil, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, the Toronto Stock Exchange, and the US dollar index. All right, let's start off with the Dow 30. The exchange traded fund that represents the Dow 30 is the DIA. And you can see here a chart of the DIA over the last two years. We can see that we've got a nice, strong upward trend right now. It had stalled for about six weeks where we had some sideways trading, but this past week it's actually breaking through resistance at the blue line that I've just drawn on the chart. So I think it's got good potential to continue higher up into the next line of resistance here and I would be long in general the large cap stocks. This market looks strong and it has looked strong since our sentiment crossover uh, the sentiment stock score line crossing above 60 some time ago. Next up we have a chart of the Canadian dollar. You can see that we have rising bottoms as I've drawn there which is a sign of optimism. We're coming up to some resistance which may slow it down in the short term but I like the Canadian dollar long term. I like the optimism here it's the one currency that's really held up well against the US dollar over the last couple of weeks where the US dollar has been strengthening against the euro, against the Australian dollar, against the yen. The Canadian dollar has not felt that weakness. It's actually been keeping pace with the US dollar and both of these North American currencies are looking quite, uh, well, the Canadian dollar looks strong and the US dollar, we'll go over in a moment, it's looking better, although still, uh, I wouldn't say strong. Here we have a chart of gold. Gold has been in an upward trend for some time. The trend, as I discussed last week, has been getting steeper and steeper. We call that a parabolic upward trend. We had a breakdown of the parabolic upward trend line right there. And this market is now working its way back to the trend line. It didn't really pull all the way back. It pulled back to more of the short-term trend line there and bounced off of it. So I think that uh, gold is still optimistic. The buyers are still in control. but. I'm not really crazy about all this overhead resistance that we see here. So I would be neutral on gold. I do think it may bounce around in this range quite a bit and you can trade it short term, but I wouldn't be initiating new positions on the buy side in gold right now. Here's a chart of the oil exchange traded fund, symbol oil. We've been in a lengthy consolidation for nearly a year. The sideways trading is optimistic because the bottoms have been rising but we just haven't been able to break out of that trading range. Now if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that over the last few weeks, oil has really rallied up into resistance. It's not quite there yet, but it's close. And so I would expect that we may see a couple more up days in the oil market before it gets stuck. And that resistance should, should slow down any upward momentum in the near term. Here we have a chart of the NASDAQ 100, really strong uptrend since March. And that uptrend continues. I see no reason to be a short seller yet because this market is not really overextended. We're not really a long ways above the upward trend line. In fact, we're closer to the upward trend line on the bottom of that channel than we are the top. So that tells me that even though it's been a pretty good market since the start of the year here, actually in the latter part of last year, we don't have an overabundance of emotion yet. And I think that this market will continue higher probably moving up into resistance right around in here. So lots of upward potential and I would continue to be long the NASDAQ stock. S&P 500, a pretty similar situation. Buyers in control, we can tell that because the bottoms are rising from left to right. The tops are not rising quite as quickly as the bottoms and that's sometimes a sign that the buyer enthusiasm is waning, but lots of upside here to the next level of resistance at that uh, top of that channel. So I think that in the near term anyway, I would expect these stocks to go higher and I'd, I'd be looking to buy stocks right now uh, on, a, on an individual stock basis, although many stocks are pretty far up already. So you gotta be selective about what you buy. This is a chart of the TSX 60, the Toronto Stock Exchange largest 60 companies. It is in an ascending triangle pattern. We have rising bottoms, that's optimism. Volatility is diminishing over time. You can see here that I can sort of demonstrate how that volatility is coming down over time. And what that really means is that buyers and sellers are coming to some consensus about what this group of stocks, namely Canadian stocks, are worth. 
As volatility narrows on the right side of the triangle, it means that investors are coming to some agreement about the value of this particular market. Now we are testing resistance right now. I think there's good potential that this market will break through that upper line of resistance. And I would put this market with an optimistic rating right now, even though it has not yet made that breakout. My final chart this week is of the US dollar index. It broke its downward trend line a few weeks ago at uh, just after it hit support here, which is what we would expect to have happen. And so I like this market if we can see a break through that little line of resistance that I've just drawn. We need to see that break from a rising bottom. So we're forming the rising bottom right now. I want to see the breakout through there as an indication that the buyers are again taking back control of the US dollar. Step one in a reversal is the break of the downward trend line. We've accomplished that. Step two is the formation of a rising bottom. We're working on that right now. And then step three is a break from a rising bottom. So I would put this market at neutral now and we'll up it to optimistic or bullish if we can get a breakout through that upper resistance line there. Now, as many of you know, each week I write a newsletter. That newsletter is free. You can sign up for it on stockscores.com and go. you do so by going into the products area, newsletters. And again, it's a free newsletter, so you just uh, have to register online to do that. Anyway, this week I featured two stocks and I thought I'd quickly explain what I like in the charts of those two stocks. Starting off, this is the HCF, Highland Credit Strategies Fund. And we have an ascending triangle pattern right there. The bottoms are rising as we move from left to right. It's had resistance at uh, about 640, 650 for some time. And it broke through that on Friday. And that's what I like about this chart. I love to see breakouts from ascending triangles because they often lead into upward trends. The second stock that I featured in the newsletter this week is Ship Finance International, SFL, on the New York Stock Exchange. Very similar situation to the last stock. Probably a better chart. I like the pattern on this one even more. You can see there again rising bottoms and a long-term resistance at just under $15. We broke through that on Friday and that causes our uh, pardon me, our signal stock score, which is the blue line here, to jump up above 80. The sentiment's been above 60 for some time, and that's good. And you can see also that volume is higher than normal on Friday. So all things combined, I think that this stock has good potential to move higher. Next level resistance is going to be right around in there somewhere, so lots of upside potential. And when you think about the downside to support right about there, we've got a relatively minimal amount of risk for a lot of reward potential, and that's what I like about this chart. Now I found all of these trading opportunities by using what I call the Stock Scores Simple Strategy. So I'm in the Market Scan tool on StockScores.com, select Stock Scores Simple, and this particular week I decided to narrow my search a little bit by only looking for stocks on the American exchanges. So I've selected that. I added in a filter to only look for stocks under $15, just because that's what I prefer to trade. And I increased my number of trades in the filter from 50 to 500. In other words, I only wanted stocks that were going to trade at least 500 times a day on Friday. Ran the report, and that gave me a decent sized list of candidates, 101. And then I went through the charts individually to find the stocks that had good chart patterns. And that's how I found. Uh, the HCF and SFL both using that same method. They are here in the list. You can see uh, HCF is right there. It was really that simple. Uh, it takes maybe four or five minutes to do this whole process. You say select all, view in the gallery, and you'll take you through the charts one at a time. And when I see something I like, I will often blow it up in size and uh, really look at the detail of that chart like I'm doing here. So, for instance, if I liked this particular chart, I could click on that. I get a lot more detail in the chart, and I can look to see whether it has the kind of chart pattern that I like. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Analysis for January 10th, 2010. For more information on the tools and services offered by StockScores.com, give us a visit at www.StockScores.com. Have a great week in the market, and trade well.